Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm down next to my beehives here. I have my Kenyan top bar hive and my cathedral hive. I am a beekeeper. We're sitting in kind of a messy part of the garden, but there is purpose here and I wanna talk about it today. So in permaculture design, we are striving to mimic systems in nature. And so it may seem strange to people that a lot, most of us in permaculture are growing grafted fruit trees. Grafted fruit trees don't exist in nature. So it seems like if we wanna copy systems in nature, why is it that so many of us use grafted fruit trees? There are significant advantages. I have mostly grafted fruit trees where I have a root stock that is selected for disease resistance, for pest resistance, and also that will um, exhibit a certain growth habit. So the characteristics of the root stock will determine how vigorous the overall tree is going to be. That's where you get super dwarf, dwarf, semi-dwarf, and standard fruit trees. All of that is dictated by the rootstock and you really, really need that disease resistance, but the fruit quality from that rootstock is like, ugh. So to get the consistent varieties of fruit that we know and love, we need to graft scions, which are little branches onto our fruit trees. And those scions are basically clones that will produce a consistent type of fruit. The seeds from those fruit are gonna be who knows what, they will express the genetic diversity available to them and they may be really, really tasty and you may get a whole new variety that's exceptional, but odds are you're gonna get something that's probably like a little insipid or maybe has a really like poor texture to it or maybe really unpalatably sour or bitter. You don't know that's the gamble and it takes several years for a seed to grow into a tree that actually fruits. So for consistency, to have a known product and to speed up the process of getting a successful yield of fruit, we use grafted trees so that we have the disease resistance and the vigor of the rootstock married to the consistent fruit yield of the fruit above and the added benefit that we can graft multiple varieties to one rootstock and we can get four or five apples on one tree, for example. There are limits to that, right? The seeds are not gonna produce offspring that are like the parent. It also means that we are reliant on human interaction, on the skills of a grafter. By the way, if you've never taken a grafting workshop, highly recommend, I've grafted several of the trees in my garden myself. But it does rely on us, and so there is a limit to how much our system can perpetuate itself without the aid of the gardener. There are some fruit trees in my garden that I grow that are on their own rootstock, and there are ups and downs for this as well. So I talked recently in a video about shrubs for permaculture gardens, about my bush cherries. Unlike most cherries that most gardeners grow tree cherries, bush cherries are on their own roots. For a grafted tree, you may get suckers. Suckers are, I actually have a video on suckers too, but suckers are the habit of new shoots coming up away from the base of the tree that are coming from the rootstock. For grafted trees, you want to remove those because they can take over. They can become the dominant branches up in the canopy of your tree and they will produce a fruit that you likely don't want to have. So you need to remove those. For some trees like plums and cherries, they can send suckers up several feet away from the main trunk of the tree. Now behind me is a damson plum. This is a Shropshire damson. It's a thorny, very, very old, one of the oldest varieties of plums. It creates a diminutive little purple plum with a bitter outside to it that makes, oh my gosh, just like the best jam. And I make damson gin every year too. It makes the most spectacular, beautiful, vibrant purple colored jam that has much more of a sophisticated flavor than jams you're gonna make from a prune plum or a Japanese plum. The bitterness and the really strong flavor of the skin that makes them like not that great for fresh eating makes them superb when you cook them. And that's the reason that I grow Shropshire Damson. But just like my bush cherries, my Shropshire Damsons are on their own roots and that means suckers. But unlike grafted trees, these suckers will produce fruit that is consistent with the parent. So 
So when we have a grafted rootstock, we're gonna get fruit that is consistent with the rootstock, but not with the fruit that we're harvesting from up above. When a tree is on its own rootstock, we will get fruit that is consistent with what we've been harvesting. And that makes it really nice for propagation. There are many ways in which varieties that are on their own roots are more resilient and are better for a permaculture system in which we want to have self-propagation. You can make divisions and share with your neighbors and friends, and that makes fruit, fruit trees and bushes that are on their own roots much more um, able to lend themselves to the permaculture ethic of share the surplus or fair share, because it means that I have plants that propagate themselves and I can take a division down here. The downside of a sucker is that if you don't want them, you have to remove them. Now, if I'm growing my Shropshire Damson, which I'm gonna be moving this year because I'm gonna put it in my hedgerow. If I'm growing something that suckers, it often will form more of a hedge, like my Rosa rugosa, for example. So I need to be aware that, that the trees that are on their own roots that do sucker, there are upsides and downsides. talk about how in permaculture, understanding both sides of the coin, right? Understanding how the habit of a plant may be a benefit, but it also can be a detriment. So you can have something that is um, creating suckers and you can utilize the suckers and that can be an added benefit to your system, but it also can create more work for you if you have to manage the suckers if you don't have a way to utilize them. So for me, I think it's great. Like I, I would love to have another Shropshire dam. So I'm going to cut this guy here. I'm going to dig this guy up and it's gonna go live in another part of my garden because I never ever have enough Shropshire Damsons. They are slow to produce and they are slow yielding the first several years. So let's do it, I'll make some more. And then I'll have these to share with my friends. But if I didn't want to have extras, now I have created work for myself because I'm gonna have to dig these up. So when we're thinking about our resilient permaculture design, think about those trees and shrubs that are on their own rootstock, whether they have a suckering habit, whether that is going to be a benefit or whether it's gonna create extra labor for us in the system. Think about when it will be appropriate to use grafted fruit trees and when maybe, it depends on the goals of your system, when you maybe want to think about using plants on their own rootstock and how that might be an aid we need to have smart permaculture design. That means understanding the habits of the plants that we put in and knowing how we can harness and utilize the natural characteristics and behaviors and tendencies of plants to work for us. For me, this Shropshire Damson with one, two, three, four suckers is gonna work really well for me. I'll be able to have a new tree for me and three to share, but I do need to keep a hold on it. Otherwise I'll get a thicket Again, that's a benefit if I want to have a hedgerow plant, maybe I want a whole hedge of this, but I need to understand the habit, know what I'm setting myself up for in terms of workload, and in that way set myself up for success. Thanks for watching today. Please check out my Patreon down in the description. That's a great way you can support the work of this channel. Bye.